Umkopfrad. Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and we are back on air in our cool radio show. Yes, and because it's a radio show, guys, we are actually in a radio station and because we are in a radio station, we have some other super cool creative people around and sometimes they are so creative that they are making some noises. So if you hear something around, those are those creative people. And we will not stop their creativity. We will just let them roll. But you have to be aware that, yeah, you might hear something exciting. I think it's a very important point to mention, uh, Anna, so that you don't think that we are just very bad at uh, editing and po post. No, we are not doing any editing. We are on the radio. Okay, I'll have to cut out something. Okay, you don't that have to cut it out. We also make podcasts, so it's natural that you just said something about editing. So it's uh, it's fine, you know. Marta is uh, is a podcast maker, and I am discovering some potential to get some OECD. Is it called this? Uh, I don't remember exactly, but when you get uh, kind of like obsessed with uh, yes, obsessive compulsive behavior, yeah, something like that disorder. That, that sounds correct. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's definitely uh, called uh, OCD in Denmark. So okay. Yeah. 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 So I'm trying to uh, work with that so that I don't get it. So I'm trying not to over obsess on the quality of the audio. But I'm really grateful, Anna, that you mentioned this. A moment of gratitude. You are very welcome. And I had to mention it because actually it's my microphone that is the closest to the to the creative people. So yeah, I know that my microphone will be the, the reason why you will hear them. Okay, but I guess it's uh, not a surprise for you guys that we have a challenge to solve. And Marta will read this challenge. We have received it via our website from a girl or a boy called Sandstorm. Yes, it's going to be a little bit challenging to be addressing to you Sandstorm since we don't know if you are a girl or a boy. But here comes the challenge. My challenge is... How do I create quality time during my week? I have a full-time job in Denmark. I like what I do and usually I spend around nine hours in the office. I would like to start some long-term activity, volunteering, being part of a club or of an organization, do a weekly class, etc. Somehow, my week is always full. Today a dinner, tomorrow cinema, the day after someone comes to visit, etc. Even if I have the impression that I am not actually doing anything special with my free time. I can find time once in a while to work intensively on something, but I am not able to organize a weekly activity. How do I find some time regularly in the week? Yes, so that is the challenge and I really love this question. How do I find some time regularly in a week? And dear Sandstorm, I don't think it's about finding time necessarily because you have just mentioned that after work you do stuff and it's a dinner or going out or whatever. It's maybe more about setting up some priorities and trying to be persistent and mindful about what you want to spend that time on because you know there is a difference between having no time and I think Marta can say something about it because you you have actually quite busy schedule and for you it's a, it's not about deciding a cinema or this for you it's a, it's a busy schedule right so I can definitely relate to what you are writing about uh, Sandstorm because I was also in a similar situation some time ago where I was working and I did like my job. I also additionally have a family and I have kids. And I still had a sensation that I would like to do something 
extra and I wanted it to be something extraordinary. I didn't want it to be just watching a movie or just, uh, I don't know, reading a book. I love reading bo books, don't get me wrong, and I think it's a quality time, but I just simply can relate to this, uh, you know, thing of I would like to do something more special with my time, that I feel that I'm wasting that time. So I can definitely uh, relate to uh, that issue, uh, Sandstorm. However, of course, I am now like, you know, I work an office job at a corporation and I have three kids and my husband often travels and I do the podcast and the radio show and I write at our blog. I am also organizing some live events. I have a social life. I meet with my friends. I have a lot of activities which are around my my kids that we do together it's still an extreme priority for me to be a mom that is present in kids life so I am present in their life every day so I became like a master of uh, making sure that my time is a quality time <laughs> and that I really use it uh, very well I never feel I'm wasting my time anymore yeah. so that was a shift that I made from being a person that was an employee and a mom and felt that I'm wasting my time into a person that feels like, oh man, I spent my days really doing some, you know, good and valuable or important, bringing money and so on thing. But all the things that I do, I don't feel I'm wasting my time. Yeah, so uh, first of all, dear, dear Sandstorm, as you could um, get the point, Marta is a superwoman and I am Batman, by the way. What I mean is, yeah, Marta, you have so many activities and um, this was a really great example and a story that you have said, but I also wanted to point out that sometimes because Sandstorm is writing, how do I find some time regularly in a week? And we don't have a full description, but from what we can say, she doesn't have a family because she says, you know, after work, she is um, having a dinner, cinema or something. Doesn't look like she has more obligations. So what I wanted to say that maybe it's not about finding time. The time is there. It's about trying to figure out how to use it and do it regularly in a mindful and fulfilling way. And Marta's example is fantastic because she really have to manage her schedule and she have to be really creative and she manages to do fulfilling things and she finds time for that even if she has a lot of obligations. Yeah. But I think that's why this challenge is an actually a very important and common challenge that many people have because we feel this lack that we are missing something in our everyday life or that we are wasting the time that we have. So I think it's actually a very relevant challenge to solve. And I think that we simply have a good way to solve it for you. Duh. Yes, we hope so. So uh, for your question, how do I find some time regularly in the week? We have five questions in return for you. And I will just briefly ask them and then we will ask them not so briefly. Deeply. 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 Exactly. Just like my voice today, you know, very Barry White of me. Okay. So question number one would be, why you want to start long-term activity in the first place? Question number two, how do you see yourself in two years? Question number three, how answers from those two previous questions match? Question number four, what skills do you need to develop in order to be your future self? And question number five, what will happen if you want? Very dramatic pause, but now we will dig into the question number one, which is, why you want to start long-term activity in the first place? And I think Marta has already touched upon this. And I have seen Lasse also nodding his head. You were nodding your head. You know, we lately, I, I noticed this uh, among my friends and also colleagues. People want to do something really meaningful with their, with their time. I really want to bring something or to have a purpose. You know, I think this is actually a, a small epidemic right now. You know, everyone is looking for the life purpose. So the question here is why you want to start your long term activity in the first place? And you have given us a couple of examples. It was volunteering, being part of a club organization or do a weekly class. So what do you want to bring to your life by 
doing this? I think that's such a great question to ask yourself. I think it's really so relevant. And I also relate to it a lot, especially this part of like volunteering. It's like when you feel there is something missing in your life or that you're wasting your time, you start to think I would like to give something to others. So you start to because you feel there is a meaning missing. (laughs) You want to do some volunteering because it sounds so meaningful. It sounds like this is very important. This is something that you can provide to others with. So I was actually exactly at this point a few years back. I was like, I would really like to do some volunteering job because I was missing that sense in my life. I was missing that purpose. Of course, I've had my job and I liked it. And I've had my family, which was, of course, an important part for me and having my children. But I was still feeling there is something missing and that, you know, and that I'm wasting my time here on Earth, you know, and stuff. And then I was like, I should do some volunteering. I should, you know, go and help other people and that will bring the the meaning into my life. That so, will fulfill the void in you that is caused by being on earth. I love this earth example. Oh yeah, we're so smart and funny. Exactly. Uh, I think, Marta, you uh, you just uh, pinpoint something very important because, you know, when we talk about volunteering, this is exactly that thing that we are trying to fulfill, feel the need of being needed, giving something back to, to people around. But the question is, is it really volunteering? It's such a, you know, like in fashion now, you know, like I will go and volunteer or, for instance, I will do a weekly class because, you know, it, it's not like because everyone else is doing it, but it, it looks like it's kind of like, you know, the thing to do that will bring me the meaning. So the question is, do you really want to do those things? You know, like the long term activity, what, what is it supposed to bring? Is it? Yeah. OK, I, I, I think it. it's, it's just really important to ask yourself, why do you want to start a long term activity yes, to exactly. find that answer to the question of what is missing? <laughs> what yeah. are you trying to get out of it? Right. Yeah. What is that supposed to bring you? Exactly. And what is it supposed to take care of? Exactly. In your life. So it's it's such a relevant question for yourself. Just simply ask yourself, why do I want to start that long term activity? What is that supposed to bring me? Yeah, why not short term? Why not mid term? For instance, it, it, it sounds stupid, but exactly why long term? So it may be a commitment to something or maybe long term in your head means that you will develop gradually something in your life. Uh, maybe you need to feel committed to something. That's why you use the term long term. And actually answer to this question can really point you into a direction of what is really missing because something is missing. I'm not saying it's uh, like a huge void, but something is missing if this bothers you, if you send us this challenge. Definitely, yeah. And I think, you know, like answering that question and then, of course, the next question will give you a good comparison of where to go with it. Exactly. So the next question is, how do you see yourself in two years? Of course, we, let's agree that two years, it's a, yeah, it can be two years, three years, five years. But, you know, what is the vision of your future self in your head? You know, how do you want to be in two years? What do you want to do? What person do you want to yeah, be? pretty much. And it sounds like a really like a yeah, obvious question because yeah, in two years. But actually, I have to say that many people, when they get this question, they they stumble. They are not really sure what they will answer. Like, how do you see yourself in two years? Lasse, you should see his this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is exactly an example. Lasse, do you have an, a, a vision of yourself in two years? It's oh, okay. Man. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Thank you for being yeah. a lovely example, Lasse. No, but th- this is actually, and this is nothing bad. We many times don't really put a lot of thought into our future selves, and then we tend to live in motions. We just go from day to day, from week to week. There is something that is missing. Then we look for a long term activity. But the thing is that. It's always a journey and a search. But if you have a vision of yourself in the future, you have something to go towards to. And then you can align your life towards that future self of yours. So I think it's a really 
extremely important exercise to just sit and think, how do I see myself in two years, in five years? What do I want to achieve? Where do I want to live? How do I want to live? What impact I want to do? And I think at the beginning it might be difficult. You have just heard Lasse and his answer. But if you will be mindful about it and you will repeat that question to yourself, you can actually come up with a, with a vision of yourself. I think this is so relevant here. If you find yourself in a situation that you have a job and you actually do have quite a lot of free time uh, after that work and you would like to do something more meaningful with that time, why not do something that will get you somewhere? So that's why just sitting down, relaxing, taking a nice piece of paper, a, a journal or something, and just, you know, sit down, put some nice music, uh, like, I don't know, light a candle, whatever gets you into that relaxed mode, and just imagine yourself in those two years. Who are you? What are you doing? What do you have? And just simply write down, you know, let your imagination loose. Just, you know, allow yourself, imagine you're shooting a movie about yourself. Don't put any kind of limitations on yourself. It doesn't matter what where you're working now. It doesn't matter what you're studying now. It doesn't matter, you know, the kids that you have or don't have. Just allow yourself to really go wild. In two years or in five years, where am I? What do I do? What do I have? How do I feel? And let it loose. Just, you know, write about it, whatever comes to your mind. Yeah, I think that a very important one was how do I feel? Because many times we are not sure what we want. We, we, we could be confused about, I don't know, the job, the country or whatever. But how do I feel? Do I feel fulfilled, happy, excited? What are the feelings I want to feel? And from there, you can actually go further. And um, Sandstorm, we don't know if you know who you want to be in two years or how your future self look like. And I hope that you will spend some time. A short disclaimer, it may not happen on a first, second or third go. It could be a process. But if you have the answer for question number one, which was uh, why do you want to start the long term activity? And you actually gave us some activities you are thinking about, which was, for instance, volunteering. And how do you see yourself in the future? then try to see if the activities that you are considering match with that future self of yours. So for instance, we were discussing this before, let's say that you want to volunteer, but you will discover you want to be a journalist and you want to travel the world with a camera and, and photograph, I don't know, whatever, animals in safari, whatever that is your dream. Can volunteering get you closer to that vision of a future self. Maybe it will. Maybe actually helping or working with animals in a zoo could be something. Uh, but uh, if it doesn't, then rethink the long-term activity you were actually thinking about taking. Exactly. And it just can simply give you that sense of direction of what kind of volunteering, what kind of class or what kind of activity you can undertake already now so that it gets you there. What is more and what is probably the most important when you have answered those questions, you will actually be most likely super motivated to do it and you will find the time and you will maybe find five uh, evenings a week because you will be really motivated to do that because it will be getting you somewhere that you truly want want to be. Exactly, exactly. And actually the question number four, what skills do you need to develop in order to be that future self in your dreams and visions is, uh, is a question that can really guide you into the direction of what long term activity you should take. And uh, I think that there is nothing more powerful. Okay, that's an ultimate statement and we should not use always, never, forever. But one of the most powerful things I have seen for people and their motivation is that vision of a future self. And if you will have that vision, if that vision will become clear and that vision will be of you doing something and then you know what skills you are missing or what you have to develop, you will be so motivated to take that activity, to learn that thing in order to get to the future self. 
and it's it's really powerful. It's totally powerful. Exactly. So this uh, fourth question is somewhere that you probably also have to spend a little bit of the time and actually do some research. Google time. Because uh, you may you may actually only get a sensation. When I started to do that exercise of where do I see myself in two years or five years, I was basically starting with how do I want to feel. So I was starting with I want to feel motivated, I want to feel inspired and so on. So I didn't have like a clear answer at the beginning. That was not really something that I could immediately, okay, if I want to feel uh, inspired and motivated, these are the five skills that I need to get, right? So (laughs) it is a it is a journey. So you have to get there gradually, you have to allow yourself some time, but actually, uh, you know, just simply trying things out. If you get any sensation of where you want to be in those two, five years, uh, and you think like, okay, maybe I would like to be a journalist, I'm not really sure yet, but that's the vision that I got, maybe volunteering at a magazine or a TV station or a radio like we do now, uh, could be a, you know, a very nice thing to do to try this out and kind of like validate, is that really something that I would love doing? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, it might sound a little bit off that we are asking those questions when your main question was, how do I find time to do things regularly? But now I will tell you the trick. You have time. We all have time. We just need to put some kind of a priority on how we want to use this time. And I think I will give you an example of myself, let's say right now. I will not talk for Marta, although I know her examples. Maybe she will come back to this. So, um... When we started with uh, You've Got Five Options, we, of course, had a podcast and, you know, I'm writing and so on. And that's really cool. And then we uh, decided to interact with people, you know, to do live events. We did one live event. We will have soon other live events. And I know that for this, I need to become very good at public speaking. So because, you know, we talk to people and uh, we lecture them or preach or however you want to call it. So I started to in my free time. Also, you know, I don't have that much of a free time now, but I started to, for instance, look at public speakers on YouTube. I started to observe how they talk. What is the body language? I uh, downloaded one audiobook, you know, the secrets to public speaking. Uh, I started to be more observant about opportunities for me and Marta to actually go out there and train that. So it came naturally because I realized I want to do the public speaking. So then I started to use my time in order to learn about it and in order to search for opportunities to do it. So uh, that came naturally when I knew what I wanted and how I see myself in the future. Prioritizing my time for this was not uh, such a big problem anymore, you know? If I would be just like, I want to learn something, I want to do something meaningful, but I don't really know what it is, how is it connected with my purpose, then I would be probably, yeah, you know, I could volunteer, uh, but yeah, there is a, there is a, this nice party or whatever, you know, it's, you know you want something, you don't know what it is, then it's difficult to focus on it. If you know what you want. If you know where you want to get, this prioritization of time will come natural. If you will discover what you need to actually, you know, learn to get there, I think then it's it's really it unfolds. And I think it's it's really valid. And I'm actually having this. It's funny because you Sandstorm have this example that today is a dinner, tomorrow is a cinema. And actually, when I started to want to do so many different things, and I love doing them, I schedule them simply into my calendar. So that's how do I get the time? I simply schedule them. You know, I put I'm doing it on Wednesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. and so on. So it's really simply about scheduling. It's as simple as that. And if I get an offer now to go to the cinema, which actually I do get this week quite a lot. Uh, I have some friends asking if I would like to see the Fifty Shades of Grey uh, kind of uh, movie. There is actually no doubt for me that I'm not going and seeing that 
because I have already scheduled my time for editing the podcast, for preparing for a live event, for solving a challenge uh, for someone that has sent it to me, uh, to us, of course, uh, via a website. So that's not a question at all, because I know what I want to do. I know that it, I'm really I'm really passionate about doing these things. And of course, going to the cinema with my friends is a nice thing. But if I have to select between solving, solving a challenge for someone to record an uh, episode about it at, at the radio station or go and see a movie at the cinema, it's a no brainer. It's a very simple answer, especially if it's Fifty Shades of Grey, Marta. Just um, I don't know, but I don't, I've heard it doesn't have really good reviews. No. So, of course, maybe it would be a little bit different if it was like the Star Wars, The Last Jedi. But that was an awesome movie. God damn it. But we actually also had to plan it. Yeah. We actually had to plan it because we first had to make sure that we can do our live event yeah. and have everything ready for the live event. And only then we went and saw the movie together, right? Yeah. So it is actually easy when you know what you want to do and when you know how you, you and others benefit from it, it becomes a no brainer. And then especially if you schedule it into your diary or a calendar, it becomes very easy. Yeah, because I think that now what happens with you, Sandstorm, is that you leave things kind of to randomness, you know, because it's like things just pop out, you know, a dinner pops out, a cinema pops out, you know, it's like, so basically, you want to do something long term, and you want to commit to something, but you are very prone to this things that are popping out and then you just follow. Once you have this direction and this vision of what you want to do, things like this won't take you out of track. I think I think this is the, the key. And uh, now actually we have the last question and it's the question that maybe will convince you to consider the first four questions. What will happen if you won't do any of this, you know, what will happen if you won't look into your future self? What will happen if you won't find that meaningful activity? What happens then? Yeah, so how will you feel if you just continue living your life like you live it now? So just imagine yourself exactly in two years from now and nothing has changed. You have the job that you have had, you have all the dinners and cinema sessions and so on. How? will you feel? Because when I started to ask myself that question, I was getting miserable. So that was like a really big, you know, alarm. You're not living your life like you should. <laughs> You're not living your life like you should. So it's really like if you will get the sensation, I will actually feel quite good. I'm enjoying my life. I'm having, you know, a nice time with my friends. Maybe it's not such a big deal. But if you get this like, holy shit, if I'm like that in two years, I'm going to feel miserable, then you will probably be more motivated to actually, you know, do something about it. Yeah, totally, totally. And as Marta said, there is no right or wrong answer to this question, because some people will say, actually, I'm happy where I am. You know, yeah, it would be cool to volunteer. But you know, actually, I like my life, then it's fine. But if you are like, no freaking way, I'm living like this in two years, then you know that it's time to change. So Sandstorm, we hope that you have benefited from uh, those questions that we came up with for you. We definitely can relate to you and to your challenge. So we are keeping our fingers crossed uh, that you will find uh, the right activity for yourself that will bring you to this place where you feel fulfilled, that you feel that you are using your time well. So a little bit of thinking, a little bit of mindfulness. Mind dream time. Ole! And you will get there, darling, don't worry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.you'vegot5options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app.
Du lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz. 